They call him Africa's Van Gogh, a Kenyan-born South African artist who grew up on the streets and with no formal training, just a maverick talent for colour and texture, is now being exhibited from the US to India and the UK. The only difference is that unlike Van Gogh, Anthony Wakaba is being appreciated in his own lifetime. This is a high-buzz, long-awaited exhibition by a successful artist. But how Anthony Wakaba Muteki got here is a story of talent and his tenacious nature. He was never taught how to instill power into a painting, and yet every canvas has a raw energy. I was born and raised in Kenya. In 1986, uh, we decided to come to South Africa. It was a whole bunch of young guys from Kenya. And we wanted to see what else is there in South Africa, apart from the negative publicity that, that we used to get to see in the early 90s and the late 80s. So when we got here, we found out that South Africa was much more developed, much more free in terms of entertainment than what we grew up with. And most of us ended up in the streets with no money at all. And my pride could not allow me to ask for help from home. So I thought I was money enough to leave Kenya and I should be man enough to get myself back on my feet again. And I started painting. And then you could get my work for about 10, 10 rands. So those cheap works of art are worth a fortune now. They should be worth the same value as what uh, my work is worth today. And those of you that got them for 35 rands should hold on to them. <laughs> he works with intense energy and speed. It's a raw and exciting form of expressionism. Growing up back in Kenya when my father was still a civil servant, he was more transferred from province to province. And I ended up going into 11 primary schools. So I've learned to make my mark as quick as possible before I move on to the next step. Are you done? That took just under an hour. That's so impressive. The canvas almost vibrates with the notes of the brass trumpet, rendered in a burst of color, inspired by a single black and white photograph. The success of his work over the past decade has taken him around the world, absorbing the richness of other cultures. Well, I originally saw Anthony Wakaba's work in Natal and was just in awe of his work and we've been wanting to get him into our gallery for many years, but he was tied into contract there, so we had to wait patiently. And this year, happily, we finally got him into our gallery and we're now going to be representing him nationally. This gallery understands the concept of satisfying more than just the visual sense. It's more a happening than an opening. If you have an exhibition with, with a difference where you can have your restaurant linked to the gallery, entertain your, your clients, feed them the most fabulous food, okay? Let your artists in the background painting a painting while they have dinner is special, very special, very different. And we've actually got two art forms here tonight, the food and the art, which is a beautiful synergy. Anthony's works have been snapped up by corporates and private collectors, including King Goodwill Zuelatini and actor Chris Tucker. What I loved about watching Anthony work is his enthusiasm and his accuracy in how he looks. And so he's able to translate so quickly what he's seeing onto the canvas. And it's so exciting because his lines are fresh and beautiful and full of passion. And the use of his color is just really wonderful. The poet John Keats who said, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And I think often that that's the gift that artists bring to the world and to us, is they see the beauty in the not so beautiful, and they see the beauty in the ordinary, and then open our eyes to it and help us to appreciate life more. And I think it went really good. I finished that in front of the, the audience, and we've sold quite a few pieces that I'm, that's why I'm having a smile on, on my face. So buy what you love from an artist you like, and the masterpiece will always speak to your heart. Just ahead, Singapore bling, and adding spice to marriage in task three of our Renew Your Vows competition.